Welcome back, survivors. I'm the survival of this, and we return to the Hunter Call of the Wild. So I'm trying to figure out which way we want to go today. We've been up a little bit to the north. I think what I'm going to do this time, maybe we'll go south. Now we're still going to keep the same loadout of weapons that we've been using. Actually looking at the map, the whole time I'd say, you know what, let's go south. The wind's a complete problem, so maybe we'll instead go north. We'll go north and maybe try branching off. Ah, see, maybe we'll getting up there. I don't want to make this episode of Call of the Wild too long. Well, I don't want to make any of the episodes quite too long. I still feel like I've got a good kind of period or time span for carnivorous hunts, which is the 15 to 25 minutes feels like good range for those. Call of the Wild, just because of how it's paced, 30 minutes is probably about the average I might get on them. Because it does take a while before you actually, first of all, locate the animal, get close enough for the shot, and then if you're a bad marksman and you don't quite get the vital shot, it'll take you a little longer to get that animal down. So, I think 30 minutes is about an okay-ish time for these episodes. And I don't know how much longer I want to spend on Park Fernando, just because I'm trying to remember what episode we're even at. I think we're up to six. Five or six. Either way, again, we've been here for a few hunts now. There is still a lot more to see on this map, but there also is more on Medved Tiger. So I kind of like to keep it a even split between the two of how much time we're on each. So maybe what I'll do, I think I'm two and three. So maybe I'll bring this up to maybe episode six or seven or so on Park Fernando and then go back to Medved Taiga just to keep things a little more changed up. Yeah, we basically only just got up to there last episode because of how long it took to get to that Axis deer that was circling. I still think it was amazing. Our first Axis deer was a piebald as well. Actually... Who knows, maybe depending on how long this hunt takes. I did pick up one of the trophy lodges from the, uh, one of the sales that Steam had for, like, the hunter stuff. So we might actually go there and put a few trophies up, just to take a look at what that's like. Overall, though, I think we're basically just going to hike and wait till we hear a call or we see a track. We do have a des kind of a destination in mind, so we'll just enjoy a little bit of an outing. That's something where Call of the Wild is really nice at. You could basically just treat this as a walking simulator and or even use the camera as a, like a wildlife documentary series in a way. Or a wildlife photography series. Because there are actually a few missions that have you go out to deliberately photograph animals. I mean, all you gotta do is press the camera and then you have this. You'll even have, like... I'm not sure what the kind of rules are for how the camera exactly works, like those nine frames and how much you're supposed to have of what, where, who knows what. But there's a lot of stuff that you could just pick up the game and enjoy a lazy walk through it without ever really hunting something. It's not quite the full game, but it's an aspect you could enjoy of it. So we're going to take the right fork here, go along, and then maybe curl our way up. I'm not really sure what we'll come across as we're going out on this. There are still a few... not all tracks lead to animals, so I always apply the sniff test. If the droppings are fresh, your game is close by. But if you find all the droppings, that animal is long gone, and you should look for the more recent trail. I mean, so the closest hunting opportunity is literally... back this way, huh? I don't think we're going to take that one. I think we're just going to go for a hike then. That's something actually a little interesting, is for a lot of the other maps, the hunting opportunities in animals are... They can almost be anywhere. You could almost have them right outside your... Or not your reserve, sorry, your outpost where you spawn into for a new game. I shouldn't say new game, but continuing your game. Yeah, I'll just go along that... And aside from this, this is a very gorgeous area to look around at. South America, whenever I think of that, I'm always drawn immediately to, like, rainforest, jungle sort of thinking instead of, well, areas like this, which can be these dense, more forests, but also very open and lush plains and fields. 
I guess it's kind of the main draw is all the rainforest and that, but there is other stuff to enjoy. Let's just get our not our caller out. We don't have anything we can kind of call in yet. Although it might not hurt to just go into the stand for a moment here. Sometimes I don't know if it's really like a programming thing that they decide to do for them, but there are times where you might actually find game a little more commonly around these hunting uh, structures. So it might not hurt just to pop in there for a moment and take a little look around to see if there is something just downhill of it. I would have thought, too, that if there is, we might have spooked it because I'm just walking, but we haven't even heard a warning call yet, so it's hard to say. Well, we'll just head up inside and just take a little peek around us. And just slowly glass around, just in case we can spot any movement. No, just, just a little bit of uh, light coloring to that tree there. That's all that drew my attention was all. A little bit that kind of had some there. I didn't think we'd get lucky and see anything from here, but I figured it was worth a shot because you never know. From my previous recording today, I had a lot of pretty dumb luck. Like, you guys will see the video. I don't know how I, how I actually managed to do that for uh, Car Divorce Plus. I've never had a hunt go down that well with like one shot one animal every time I'm sure it was only three animals but still the best record I have going oh wow it does well that does not look like we've gone all that far does it if like the outpost is just right there that we came from huh well we'll have to keep on hiking then and get some more distance from there I'm a little surprised that we haven't heard any calls or anything yet. Like, not even a track across the trail. I'm not sure if it's just because of the area. It's something where we have to get more into, like, the woodland and that. But if you do compare... Oh, nice view out to... Pretty good distance out that way. Actually, that might be towards the area we were heading. Yeah, that actually sort of is close, because the outpost is somewhere in that direction. Can't actually see it through all the trees there, but we'll just keep on walking, see if anything does come across our way. I'm hoping not to have to make this an episode where all I do is talk for the entirety of it, but you never know. Oh, something up there. But just a nice, relaxing hike, time out. Um, I should check and see while I'm just kind of going slowly along. What is my hunting log at? There we go. Oh, actually, well, we may be close to level 48. It's all, that's a little deceiving. It's more the numbers you have to watch because we're still... 40,000 away, I think? Let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah, it looks like about 40,000 experience away, so it will take some time to accumulate that up. I mean, oh, just look at this, though. This is quite the vista and view just to take in and look around. Hold on, I just wanted to take a look for a moment. Okay, yeah, just a rock. I had a feeling it was nothing more than a rock. I just thought I'd take a little look around. You never know if something could be down in those... Surprisingly, a number of barren trees there. Kind of continues all the way along. Well, I'll just keep to the trail and then... Yeah, I don't really have as good of... Or as nice of a view from the other way, like going southwards. Looks like there's a lot more vegetation, and that is even back to the outpost, so... It does seem there's a bit larger of a area before game... ...might be wandering and roaming about. Oh, 
I was very much hoping we would hear something by now. But, I mean... Not really getting anything. No warning calls, no tracks on the road. Well, trail. I guess this kind of would qualify as a road for the area. But yeah, I thought we might have heard or seen something by now. Although it looks like we're getting into an area with more trees, so that might help quite a bit. If there's more shade and coverage, the animals, maybe they'll stick around that a little more. I thought I might have seen something at the water. Oh, no, it must have just been a tree. Bingo, we got ourselves a mule deer, so let's try bringing that up and in to see what it's looking like. Actually, I gotta check. Does that even work on mule deer, or is that for... No, that doesn't. Okay, I need the... Uh, number seven is the call for it. It's hard to say how far away the call came from. It sounded like it was just down the slope a little bit, so we might be able to bring him up and then get a good look at him. And I don't want to limit our... or zoom in too much, so that way we miss any movement outside of what we're able to see. I don't even see, like, antler tips yet, so maybe what I'll do is I'll start... I am crouched down, so I'm going to start advancing towards where it called from. It could have been a mating call, but it's still going towards a need zone. Actually, I should check, because I have... Don't I also have... Okay, I must not have taken it. I thought I had a grunt caller as well, but I think it only works for whitetail and mule. Which, granted, that's what we we just heard call was mule deer, so... Might have been an oversight on my end not to bring that caller with me. Ah, uh, you know what? Ah, we'll switch out, or keep that there, put that into our bow. And just go slowly along to see what we find. I still do also have the M1, I think? Yeah, the M1 E1 Yak. At least I think that's how I pronounce it. Oh, geez, looks like maybe we didn't even actually get its attention because I thought we might have seen it as we got up to this pair, this part here, but... Ah, uh, no, that's a screamer. That's the bleat. Yeah, without hearing another call and not seeing it, it could be close to anywhere, so I think I'm just going to walk along the road a little bit further. It's possible we may get a warning call from him, but he might have just continued on his way towards whatever he was after. Could even be that I was going for the lake down there, went to get a drink. But maybe if we're lucky, we'll go along here and we'll be able to find some tracks that'll kind of point us in the direction. Not just a tree. But again, this is where the the Hunter Call of the Wild takes a lot longer just to kind of show off some of the simpler stuff because hunting's not something that's just immediately go out up in a spot, there's an animal, bam, bag, and back home. No, it does take some time. Carnivores is a little bit better because of both more confined maps and well, confined maps and just kind of feels a little easier to get replies and hone in on animals. Now this is probably what we heard call. 
Yeah, this was Mule Deer. Oh, okay, he was trotting along, so he's probably got some distance away on us now. What was that? Almost sound like a pig of some kind. Yeah, it says old, so he probably just kept right on going. If these are more trot uh, tracks, and he is long gone. Although we do have tracks of something else, and it looks like it might actually have been a pair of animals. We'll follow this for a little while. Ah, uh, probably hear a warning call soon because of the way the wind's blowing. Okay, kept going through there. Actually, I wonder if maybe it's a herd of mule deer and these are two females with them. Yeah, that seems to be exactly what it is. Looks like the male's traveling with possible... Could be other males, but more likely... Oh, actually, it does seem to be a small batch or a stag party of them. Ah, we'll follow along this. It's the only trail we have, and at least there's more than a single animal on it. Seems to be there are just a pair of them, though. So what might they be going for? I think they're going for water again. I think next episode I'm going to have to break out the ATV and just go for a drive to get us out of this little bit of an area, because... That's one of the things about the Hunter, is you can almost constantly loop yourself around just on the outposts because of how the need zones can work for the animals. They won't always go into different areas or waver too much if they have a set sort of pattern to them. Yeah, that's a trot now. Hard to say if we'll catch up to them if they're going this quickly. Well, they are stopping here and there just to do little bits of walking. Actually, this looks very similar to where we... Yeah, this is going to take us right to where we hunted the puma in that. So I was going to say, this looks very, very similar to somewhere we've already been. I think it's actually around the exact area that we hunted the other mule deer at. Not last episode, but I think the episode before that. Although they split up. That's a little odd. Usually the animals, if they travel together, they stay more tightly packed. They do both seem to be, again, going for the same area, but... They did break off a little bit for this area, or for this little slope down. I was kind of hoping I would have heard a warning call so that way we could hone in on them and then even if we just use the muzzle loader, we might be able to get one of them down with a nice long shot. Just gotta keep slowly going. I don't want to sprint because... Compared to carnivores, if you sprint in Call of the Wild, you probably are not going to see a single thing. You'll probably hear the warning calls, but I don't think you'll really be able to actually catch up and properly get a chance on an animal if you do sprint. That's This is the game, well, I should say this franchise, because both Call of the Wild and the Hunter Classic kind of ingrained that to me, but they're the games that really, really drilled in, do not run if possible. Okay, yeah, we're getting right on top of where we hunted the other one. Or those two animals, the puma and the mule deer. Be oh, before.
sure the hell you would have caught up a little bit by now, but if they keep trotting like this again, it's hard to say if I'll ever actually close the distance at this rate. It looks like they've met up again. So, okay, well, they're definitely past that need zone. That was even for a black buck. So there must be a mule deer need zone that's up ahead. No, oh, okay, there we go. We actually got a change in the dropping, so they're fresh now. So we might actually be able, to, if we can get up high enough, we might be able to spot them from a distance. That said, they have gotten themselves into some pretty dense area here. Yeah, it's just these two, two males, no, two bucks. We'll continue right along. We might get a good opportunity as soon as we get out of the trees and right towards here, because it looks like this is the crest of a hill. And we get a nice, that's yeah, not bad of an opportunity, so it's a little bit at least. So I stop, take a moment, but it doesn't really look like I can see anything. Yeah, I must have been heading straight for the water here then. Just that both tracks are still going right for it. Although, that's probably something, yeah, that's something else entirely. Or is that another mule? Well, it looks like it might be another mule deer, so it may actually be a group of three. Bingo. Okay, fleeing, so. Yeah, we definitely got a little bit spooked from us nearing. But the good news might be if we don't super, like, aggressively go after them, but we kind of slowly near the spot they were, maybe they'll make a loop back. So that's why I'm going to crouch down, just kind of get us into position a little bit more. And we'll just kind of watch in the direction that that one went going. I have a feeling that's where the other two might have gone as well. But it did look like that one might have had a decent sort of score to it. Nope. Actually, Black buck warning call. Okay. So we may have a few different opportunities from this area. Now, the good thing, as much as the mule deer fleeing wasn't exactly great, a good thing was that it wasn't a super fast run. It was more like a trot away. So it is possible if we just slowly get towards here, we give them some time, they'll actually double back towards us. I don't know for certain, but we just have to take our chances there and see. I do have to admit that this map, once you get into the woodland, it's not as bad to hunt in like the dense woods as some other maps, like uh, Leighton Lake District and Hirschfeld Inn, like the two maps you get with regular standard Call of the Wild. If you get into areas that have a lot of like bush and uh, vegetation, it can be hard to spot anything in that. Here, though, the bushes in that are... I mean, they're present, but they're not super thick and heavily block your vis... Oh, good lord. Block your visibility. Okay, so it's actually right there. I was not expecting that call that close. Yeah, so there you are, right there. Look, I'm trying to think how I want to do... Oh, there you are. I think I am going to use the bow and arrow. Ah, 
see, I don't like how he's positioned. Yeah, I'm not going to take a shot. I'm just going to let him do what he's going to do. I should have taken the shot a little earlier when he had stopped. And things, too, is... I unfortunately don't have the pine trees or the evergreens to really be able to make the most use of... Like, being able to conceal myself and my skills. So I do got to be quite a bit more careful there. Sometimes, I really just got to say, you know what, forget the bow, let's just take the shot with the gun. I was kind of hoping we would have seen the other mule deer that went up that way come back, but it doesn't look like it. And I don't think he would have gone scared off because of that one going. Okay, there was another warning call. But I don't have any idea where it exactly came from. I don't see anything, like, movement-wise, too much around us. So I'm going to try to guess into this bush, and then try to see if we can call something in. I'm not going to go too fast, because that, again, sounded like a very close call, just like the previous one was. Now, are you going to proc my ability? Now, fortunately, it does not look like it. No, oh, no, it will. Perfect. Okay, I can use this. Now, it sounded like there might have been something over here a bit. But one of the issues of doing this as I also lose quite a bit of my visibility from, like, if it's at my back. So what I'll probably have to do is just keep trying to call and listen very sharply. Oh, I just saw it for a moment, and it's on the other side of that tree, but, yeah, we got a mu one of the mule deers has come in. I think that's the one we saw go running off the other time. I'm just going to take the shot on him. I think that downed him. Oh, there's actually potentially another... Yeah, that downed him, and it looked like there was another one. So what I'm going to do is let's get that out reload. So I'll make sure I'm not running. Again, that's one UI element I'd like to see added. It's just in the bottom right corner there, just a little icon so that way you know your sprint is on or off. I'm going to get that reloaded, because if we get up here... We might actually get a chance at seeing what the fleeing one was. As I think that was another mule deer. Yeah, that was another mule deer. At least I'm fairly sure it was. So 
I can get up here and get a little bit of a look forward and a... Oh, yeah, there you are. Oh, you actually have a very nice looking one on you, too. And I think that is two for two. I think... Well, you guys probably can't see because the video might not have much detail. As soon as we're reloaded, I'll take out the rangefinder because I see a little lump that's does not look quite like it's supposed to be there. Yeah, we got both of them. Perfect. So let's take a look and see what these two are. I'm guessing maybe a gold and a silver, but I don't know Mule Deer scoring all that well. Oh, yeah. Definitely a gold. Yeah, through both lungs, got him there. Interesting bit of things for his antlers, though. I might actually take him and... You know what? I think I will taxidermize him. So I'll take you, and we'll go for a little hike and get our other mule deer. And again, I probably will leave this episode just at that. Like, I do want to do more per video, but the problem is the videos will get super, super long then. I got to try to watch and limit... No? Nope. Well, you know, that's just a female black buck. I'm not going to be too concerned about her. Now, if that one was a gold, this one is probably a silver. So let's just get down there and see how he is. But it did... Patience will pay off in this game. <clears throat> I'll just a little something in my throat for a moment here. Patience will pay off. If you do find an animal that called recently, and you might not have gotten the... Or you can find the tracks, but like it didn't come to you, you could try tracking it down and seeing if you can get it. So we'll just get you, see how you're doing. Yeah, you're probably a nice silver, aren't ya? Yeah. Ooh, actually, that was all three vitals. That was a better shot than my previous. So, we'll take you. I don't think there's gonna be anything super close around. Like, there is the black ball, or the black buck that just made a bit of a warning call, but I don't think we'll go after them. Oh. There she is. Yeah, we'll leave her be. We'll just kind of take in the nice vista view of the lakeshore here. And then probably leave this episode of the Hunter Call of the Wild here. Uh, mostly right now it is just wandering and random hunting, whatever opportunities come up. But if you guys have any animals, or any animals in particular you'd like to see me try going after, just let me know in the comments. I always want to try to include you guys or my viewers in any of the videos or series that I do. So, for now, again, just really stunning views sometimes for the game. So. Thank you all very much for watching. If you do like the series, be sure to give a like. Any comments, tips, tricks, or requests, be sure to leave them in the comments right down below. I try to respond to any feedback as soon as I can that comes up on the channel. Until I catch you all in the next episode, those survivors, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.